Okay. Our next presenter is a liturgist, Emmanuel Anagwo of Catholic Institute of West Africa, Portacot, Nigeria. He will be speaking on liturgy, preconciliar mass, conflicts and resolutions. If you remember in the morning, I forwarded it to all the participants his paper. So if you have your uh, laptop, you should be able to access his paper. All right, the floor is now yours, Emma. Thank you. Thank you very much, GT. Yes. Right. As already informed, my name is Emmanuel Chile Anago. I like my name to appear, if possible, through the artworks so can reduce the middle name to C. I modify my uh, paper to or add something. The young what is what was already announced by Joe, whom I also thank especially for continuing to remind me about this conference since last year and the, the one of this year. The title is Liturgy, Preconciliar Mass, Conflicts and Resolutions, and I had a goal on the Nigerian pastoral experience. Yes, I begin this way because I will speak to the paper. Hence, I requested that the full paper of the house be available so that when I speak, if we are not able to meet up with time, somebody can read. But I also expect your input so that I will also improve on the work, which I still believe is not going. Now, I started this way that the question of Tertullian, a text century to religion, what has added to do with Jerusalem? continues to be asked today. Actually, with regard to our topic here, what is the relationship between a conciliar mass with conciliar or post-conciliar mass? Is there any disconnect or a development between them in the Eucharist celebration today? And the answer here is yes. It is because it is strongly believed that the conflicts of pre-conciliar mass receive its deepest grounded only at the resolutions of conciliar and post-conciliar mass. As Catholics, those who this is the background I'm coming from, it is a well-established protocol that liturgy, which is the source and summit of the entire Christian life and spirituality, continues to experience several reforms. These reforms simply reveal more of the union of the people for better participation in its celebration of the Mass and its fruits. Wherever, whenever liturgy has not been seen to bring the people to participate more on it and enjoy its fruits, the tension or tensions for liturgical reform increases. The last of such liturgical reforms with some resolutions are taking place in the Catholic Mass was that of the Second Vatican Council, which has given birth to Conciliar mass. Now, other issues there are not so lessened. What is important that we are clearing ground that there's always been the part of the church to ensure that people participate, especially the Second Vatican Council, with their call is the watershed, the, what has given rise to this study. Because it's, I have given us the Magna Carta, the, the great chart, how the celebration in our century, in our time, is expected to go with. Before then, there have been this back and forth, and I see it looks as if the church is losing it. But the Second Vatican Council, we may say we have a blueprint. Yes, we have not reached the peak of what we are going for, but at least we have a model. Now, the next slide we have here on the score that the, the continual liturgy seeks to give vigor to the Christian life of the faithful, to adapt to what is changeable to the needs of today, to promote union among all believers, all who believe in Christ, and to strengthen the church's mission to all mankind. And with that third point, I also am happy, since my paper is flowing on best news, as we are in Christ, in the study of the world Christianity today. At least, 
the Scotland Gun Council is in, in two laws to ensure that people all oh, that promote union among all who believe in Christ. The other point there, the nature of mass, I will not bother you here, but surprise it to mention that the, the liturgy of the mass is a celebration of the sacrifice of thanksgiving the church offers to God the Father. Yes, that is basically what we are talking about. But then what may interest us is what I have here in the third section of my work. The analysis on preconciliar mass, conciliar mass, and the postconciliar mass. Try to explain my term. When we hear about preconciliar mass, we are otherwise called to the time mass, traditional Latin mass, or traditional rites. It's used to designate Latin liturgical rites or mass of the Catholic Church before the Second Vatican Council. This point is very important, which coexists with post-conciliar rites. Of course, we know uh, uh, after the Scotland Time Council, we brought the city to get significant changes in the Eucharist celebration. Some of this is contemporary, is considered those days to be too fluid, drastic, or demeaning. Nonetheless, they were giving permissions that they can celebrate this to the time mass, or what you may call reconciliar mass, along with the conciliar or post-conciliar mass. In this work, by the way, I make it very clear that both conciliar mass and post-conciliar mass are used interchangeably because they are related. They form a list to the letter to describe the Eucharistic liturgy that follows the instructions, directives, and guidelines stipulated by the Scotland Can Council. Why the post conciliar, as the name suggests, is after known as post Vatican Mass, that is a plural from the conciliar Mass. Now, the major title of my work, the conflict here actually that prior to the Scottish Vatican Council, the celebration of the Eucharistic sacrifice has grown cool as it relates to the participation of the deity. Within the preconciliar liturgy, the celebration of the Holy Mass was easily viewed as the work of the priest. This has a result in a wrong mentality that the church belongs to the Reverend Father. Hence, in some apparent or language in the body in Nigeria, uh, many times I give out, I listed out some what they call how, how they try to describe the church as it belonging to the priest. And not their own, the Ibo, the them there, the Yoruba, the, the Hausa, Efi, the Bibio, them, them. Now, the point there is that the faithful just attended the Eucharistic Spirit or the, for the priest to celebrate for them. They believe that they have no contribution to make since they are passive participants. Now, the reality is that it made people to think that the, what happens in the church and the celebration is around the priest of course, informed by how the priest does his own thing. Nonetheless, whenever there is need for response for them, of course, the priest celebrant comes to them. And that has given rise even to what in the, in the background where I come from, the people, they will say that all they do is that when they attend the mass, the Latin mass, they will just wait for the priest to finish his sopre sopre abracadabra. <laughs> just once he says his secular seculum, they will ask him then. In the, the, the reality here, at least now, in this cold place, because it looks as if people are not carried along. And that is the, the bottom line of the conflicts we are talking about. Now, the resolutions of the liturgical reforms of the Scotland Town Council. Scotland Town Council now came with the conciliar mass and instruction therein. The, I mean, the fifth section of my work, my paper, the, the resolutions. Now, this contract we have said that some striking resolutions include that the priest and the assembly act together. It's no longer just the priest, they are doing his own thing with the, maybe the ministers. So that it eliminates this parallel liturgy where the priest does his own people with their own heads. Even here, prior to that, people see people even researching those who are saying maybe what the question of prayer, what the, the mass goes on. Now, it presupposes that for the most part, everyone does everything at the same time. Of course, we have the section where the priest also attends 
we say prayers in the day, just using words or um, uh, vocally. Now, the priests and the assembly together prepared to celebrate Mass in the petition rather instead of the prayers at the foot of the altar, altar standing as the preparation for the celebrant and the minister. Alone. Now, the priest does not read the rhythms himself, <laughs> but listens to them proclaim along with the assembly. The priest does not start, start Eucharistic prayer or a canon after reciting the psalms by himself, but sings the psalms along with the people before beginning it. We have also the celebration of the liturgy of the word and the cheer or anthem, instead of parts alike in the preconciliar mass, as well as the integration of the women as part of the liturgy itself. To encourage active participation, there are is the audible recitation of the canon, the Eucharistic prayer. Even the universal prayer, the prayer of the faithful, is a notable feature of the post conciliar liturgical reform. The bottom line was active participation from the late. Now, it is in the midst of what I have just said here, and I say now the next session there is on the spirit of the resolution of the Scapatican as matters arising. In his often quoted book, The Spirit of the Liturgy, Joseph Gatarasenga rightly emphasizes that the act of celebrating the liturgy properly, as Janet Brandy, is the key to foster active participation of the spiritual group and Joseph, of the people of God and the people of God in the time of worship. Now, what we are saying here is that the act of proper celebration of the conciliar, with conciliar mass is guided by the appropriate spirit of the council fathers. Now, we try to uh, uh, analyze some of them. They miss to portray the facts of this resolution. The active participation at mass, 6.1. The council fathers noted that the world and church endlessly desire that all the Faithful should be led to full, conscious, and active participation. That is the what is what has inspired the stuff of that, especially not the reform liturgies of that council. And in the midst of that, is to ensure that people are not just there as passive participants, but active participants and celebration. Of course, it presupposes personal preparation, calls for individuals to anticipate the part they are going to play as a privilege. And of course, also the same role. So the continual mass has a system to admonish that the people should not just be spectators or passive observers or strangers, rather they should actively involved in the celebration of the rites. And other things we can with them. Now, another outstanding thing there is that facing the people. It is also certainly correct to agree once again with Razinga uh, that I quote him uh, uh, for what he wrote the faith. Uh, Turning towards the Lord by U. M. Lang. Now he said that to ordinary church goer, the two most obvious effects of the liturgical reform of the Scottish Council seem to be the disappearance of Latin and the turning of the, turning of the altar towards the people. Now the point I'm trying to bring out here is that this time before before the, the reforms, the priest faces the this is the uh, the, the, the tabernacle, otherwise it's, people, it's not facing the people. But after some of that, there's this need to face the people so that people will be carried along as the peace is celebrating, just do not back them. Though, when you read the uh, different sources I, I have, they say that each of them, they have their own arguments. But to encourage this spirit of active participation, there is need also that the peace should be facing them. Now, that's what we call facing the people. Now, the principal argument we face the people is to allow the communal people centered worship aspect of the Christian uh, uh, life or worship. The other argument is also there for the other one here, but this is just to break out why the priest faces the people are uh, like before the, 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 the conciliar mass. Now, in the, the post conciliar mass, also, there is this call for abundant use of the word of God. Not quite yet, it's very clear. Then the 6.4 is on the celebration and translation to vernacular language. We all know that Latin was the language of Latin is the official language of the church. Now with the post conciliar mass is encouraged that native or uh, vernacular language should be used. More importantly, also, I even added there that even the use of certain uh, musical instruments, we are not in improved them. But this has also been added 
I mean, it's in the point I made on 6.5, African music and instrumentation into Catholic liturgy. Uh, in the pre Vatican II era, it was a taboo beating drums during mass. Today, drums are beaten, showcasing the real Nigerian traditional fashion with the air filled with sounds of praise and worship, characteristics of typical Africans. The other points are there. Now, that leads us actually to liturgical importation, which are the, the, the ones I followed. I, again and again, I hear this aspect of importation, which all of us know that it's the same thing. The Catholic Institute of West Africa, where I come from, is also known as the center of enculturation and contextualization. Here, we try to uh, see the world we can to expose people. Don't ask me how far we, how we have done. Yes, we have done our work. It remains for maybe those who are in charge, the hierarchy tools, I mean, the bishops, to see the best how to implement that. But at least, I can, I may give you testimony that 12, over 12 years I have been in Siwana, with some of the work we have done, we, some students have, been, have come out with good decisions to Project and things for the culture, but perhaps maybe one day we shall they, they remember the library and also ask how we make those materials and them. Now, what is the implication for Eucharistic liturgy in the context of what we see and it is to have contextualized my work? Now, one of the resolutions of the Reformed Liturgy of the Council is that the church has given an open check to explore the values and genius of the people, of course, following the following due process and guidelines to that effect. In as much as we call it that. Now, the Candy Church in the Global South leaves a mark upon a rediscovery of modes of worship <coughs> among her people. There is a great treasure to be exploring and adapted from the traditional, religious, and literary job, like forms of oral, uh, oral tradition, as such as story telling, cocktail, legends, songs, readers, proverbs, audience participation, gestures, dance, mimicking, of course. Some of these things have been done, but what we are saying is that the last is not yet time. We continue to explore and pray that it should be the order of the day. Um, I'm bringing, uh, bringing this point because, again, and again, you see people who always think that the best way to celebrate the church will be perhaps imitating the Western world, the global north, uh, not even recognizing it, but appreciating even what we have. That's you begin from known to your known that the best one of evangelization will be the one that flows from within, as long as you maintain the orthodoxy, of course, the, of the church. Now, uh, the other point is here, but then, maybe to concretize what I'm talking about, what is the tax? I mean, section 8. What is the tax of renewal before the church in Nigeria today? Over 60 years now, since the resolutions of the Scotland Council, it's says immediate for the church in Nigeria to review her liturgical life as the life wire of what we see it. After all, liturgy plays a biological role in sustaining the life of any church. It puts life to the beliefs, patterns, and also worship of God. So liturgy is theology and life. Liturgy is thus rightly considered as the official prayer and worship of the church. It is a prayer offered by and in the name of the whole church, <coughs> Christ and our members. Accordingly, the Scotland Council defines it as the, the exercise of the priest of of Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, it is not uncommon for the Catholic Church in Nigeria to witness a growing misguided sense of renewal, renewal of the Pascal II, during the liturgical worship. This has made members of the church to be confused, upset, and perplexed. The manner in which some of the priests celebrate Mass has caused some families and others to show little or no interest in the Eucharist. Little ones that recently, that I'm sure you are some of us, but maybe a special background from Nigeria, are aware that on 15th August of this year, 2024, the Catholic Church Office of Nigeria issued a letter to all priests on our visit during the liturgical celebration, uh, which they strongly condemned and prohibited liturgical apparition that defends Catholic liturgy in Nigeria. Now, Nonetheless, coming out from foreign missionary to an indigenous story, <clears throat> there is need to give the church in Nigeria the image of the church in order to transmit the riches of the topical tradition, patrimony, and practices in Nigerian languages and symbols, which the, which the people are to understand and appreciate. There ought to be 
a topical renewal and a specified call for a continuation as a matter of necessity to create and create a church and a faith that addresses the Nigerian situation. By the way, I want to credit to also scholars who are even though not in Nigeria but outside who continue to make waves with writings the the uh, the how they project some of the things we have uh, uh, you you know people some of them don't know that I'm aware of. Now what we are saying is that the condition of this paper the local church in Nigeria should rise to the challenge of using this means of salvation to impact on what Christianity the rich cultural values and generous for the Nigerian experience, for instance, have possibilities to elicit and enhance active, conscious, and plenary participation. In this way, the liturgical spirituality and inculturation would be sustained and celebrated and elaborated for the entire worshiping community that affirms the slogan, less redemptive, less celebrity, less preventive, that means the law of what the church believes is the law of what she prays for and is the law of how she lives out. Now, what we are saying is that, that we more can still be done. And I want to end my, my word of conclusion and what my, my presentation is that this, undoubtedly, these resolutions of the post conciliar mass remain a vital aspect of the worship experience of the church in the global south of Nigeria today. They integrate full engagement with various elements of the liturgy, such as prayers, hymns, readings, rituals, and sacraments. It cannot be the say that post conciliar mass fosters a deeper sense of belonging to the faith community. In fact, it takes spiritual growth and strengthens the communal bound among worshippers. Though there is still room for an improvement, and through this means, worshippers encounter God, deepen their faith experience, and integrate the graces received into the daily lives. Admittedly, the post conciliar mass becomes a transformative and enriching experience, typical of the fruits of synod and stability for both the clergy and the laity. The liturgy, therefore, does not negate the possibility of resolving conflicts with good and valid cultural expression in order to promote active, conscious, full and social community participation, as recommended by SC14. This, however, does must be done following certain criteria so that the integrity of the faith is preserved and the possibility of error and abuse in the liturgy is kept in control. One thing is certain, the last word is not yet high as far as the order and the structure of the mass is concerned. In the spirit of the synod of hospitality, the church is still pastorally evolving, even as she maintains orthodoxy and tradition. The celebration of the Mass flowing from the resolutions of the, the uh, in the post conciliar Mass conveys in countless ways the truth that the Church is God's pilgrim people as a whole, called to participate in God's saving work. Thank you for your attention. I am done with my first presentation. Thank you very much. In my, I mean, <laughs> your paper really brings down to earth the reason why we are Christians. Without worship, without liturgy. I mean, theology without liturgy is empty. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So let's take some questions. Yes, Simon. Emmanuel, thank you very much again. I enjoyed your paper. Uh, I love how you trace what the historical realities behind participation in the liturgy. Uh, but my question is, I want to push back a little bit and then get what you have to say on this. You talked about participation in the post-conciliar liturgy, which is true, there are elements of participation. <laughs> uh, but there is something I want to ask about the Eucharist itself. When the priest says, the Lord be with you and also with you, we reply, the, the baptized or the gathered community. Does that, does, does that contribute to the efficacy of what is going to happen to the bread and wine? So what I mean is that Father Joe of you, Father Emmanuel, is saying the Mass, 
and you say the prayer, Eucharistic prayer, and I, the lady, sitting down there, I say my part. Does that part, does that contribute? Is my part needed for the trans, if I use the language, or transubstantiation of bread into wine, uh, the bread into the body and wine into the, body, uh, the blood? Until that is up, I don't know which of the rites, whether it's the Maronite or whatever, I'm not so sure yet, where it is so needed for the, the Eucharist to be transformed that so the priest cannot take on that role alone. It is the community, the fellowship of the gathered faith that, that can do that. So I am saying that rather than say participation, uh, participation does not lead to the efficacy of what the priest is doing if I, the laity, doing that. Maybe we say limited participation because we have not yet let go of this notion of protesters that the priest, in the priest lies the fullness of the altar Christus and then the remnant is on the laity. So I just wanted to get your take on that. Thank you. Can I follow up with the question that is related to this so that you can okay, go ahead. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Just hold on, Emma. Just hold on for an, an another up. related question. But I think related. Okay. Let's see. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Uh -huh. What what comes from the people in the church? May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands. Yeah. You are saying at our hands. Oh, yeah. They are saying at your hands. Till today. And I have often spoken up on this. And I was almost, if not called, a heretic. Uh -oh. Yes, because when the people of God there, who supposedly are invited to make their own active participation, mm -hmm. when they respond from my hands, it means they are not even part of it. The sacrifice which they have brought forth together with me, I am the only one sending the sacrifice up to the Father. And they are excluded even while they are present. So often and often at home, I raise that question, even here in Milwaukee, in New York, in Los Angeles, California, Archdiocese, whenever I bring this up, the way I am frowned at makes me know that the church is still one million miles away from appropriating the mind of Christ and making this thing real lived experience. Amen. Sir, over to you. Before Emma responds, Emma, Emma, Emma is the Emma is the liturgist, he's the expert. Yeah. Emma, over to you. <laughs> okay, can I go? Yes, 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 yes please. <laughs> okay, right, thank you very much. I, I thank those who uh, raise questions and also those who try to uh, answer the issue. And the way I look at it, actually, I am not so sure if I understand the question clearly. I will take it from even the beginning of the liturgy of the Eucharist, uh, where the priest will uh, pray brethren, as I've already said here. Now, the proper thing, actually, is that people should have, the priest should say, after that, you say, my sacrifice and yours. My sacrifice and yours. So it's not, at the time, it was, Maybe in the old translation, where I get this impression as if it's the priest that is taking the sacrifice. To the best of what I understand from active participation, it means that by the way, all of us are equal. This is a matter of uh, maybe assigning rule. You see, this, uh, this, uh, the, the, the idea of the, the conciliar mass gave this wrong impression, even the way some of us priests have, as if maybe they are the everything belongs to them. No, the priest is just doing a role. He's taking his own role. Yes, I, I'm aware that we have major and minor ministers. Maybe the priest or well, them belong to the, uh, uh, the major minister. But the fact is that we see the Second Council and the uh, post cultural mass is uh, bringing out this power that every member of the church, both the clergy, the religious, the laity, we are all important. And indeed, by nature of our practice, which by the way I skip, maybe those who read the two Bible will see that. Everybody is qualified and is also participating. And the priest, the mass is not maybe the work of that of a priest. And at times, again and again, I try to remind my brother priest when they give impression that I'm celebrating mass for you. The mass is one of us. Yes, I know the language the Lord did with you, as is as a person can give impression as if maybe the, the, yeah, the Lord did with you because the priest is the other, is the other Christ celebrating. But then, he is also participating in that. Perhaps also, 
and uh, there's an aspect of William, if the priest knows his role, his role is not that of maybe that high king, which by the way, that takes me by the way, that's the sister of priests. In the chair, they use uh, the altar, I mean the presidential chair, he used as if they are part of a king, mm -hmm. which ideally should be a service chair. <laughs> now, the bottom line, what I'm saying is that the celebration of mass, yes, the priest is there, the people of God are there also, but all of them are part of the mass, and the priest should not. So, my second class is encouraging that we have this Kokunua spirit where perhaps a best idea can come from African point of view, where they gather in the family to for a meeting. There must be somebody who is directing the meeting. But it does not make the person to have two heads or maybe uh, more important than the others. I continue to look at this, maybe we are not yet there. Because changing the idea that the, the mass or the celebration is for the priest can be a gradual process. But I think, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we are making a uh, new rule. Uh, also, uh, the other things I have said, but just to say that uh, it's a gradual process to underscore the fact that the celebration of mass, all of us are in front where the priest is there, and also with the different roles, the ministerial role they play, they communicate the same thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes Thank you again, Father. Um, I'm taking advantage of this. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, I come from a different uh, liturgical tradition of, of the Israelite, uh, so we do not have that, uh, what you discussed earlier in terms of uh, the, uh, the sacrifice of the, uh, the gifts at your hands. However, our, our offertory starts at the beginning of the Mass. And at the beginning of the Mass, when the deacon says, let us pray for those who brought their offerings. Mm -hmm. And the people respond, receive our gifts. No, receive the gifts of those who brought, of the ladies, and us too. So every gender, everybody is included. So that one. However, that brings us to the rubric that we have, which is not usually used, but in our rubric for the church was, the, let the priest choose the best bread for sacrifice from what the people brought. So actually, the bread was already brought by the people, and that was uh, given back. So I just want to, uh, uh, I'm coming from a different perspective. So the gift of the people, the, the offering, when people are entering the church, are coming with their gifts. That is the whole concept. So uh, there is no difference between who brings the gift and to whom it is uh, offered in a way, uh, at least in our tradition. So I just want to bring up this is now, uh, is, a non-issue for us. And the dialogue between the priest, the deacon, is a three-way dialogue between the priest, the deacon, and the people, almost an equal part. And that is also another uh, uh, community celebration that goes on. So my question over here is that maybe tied up, uh, we are still in that pre-conciliar <laughs> tradition. We have not reformed and we want to keep it <laughs> that way, in a way, uh, so long we educate our people. Uh, as I was teaching uh, catechism here, or adults especially, well, they were asking us why, you know, we used to face the altar, now we are facing the people. Uh, the, the, the priest is facing the people. What is the difference? Could they explain to us in a layman's person, uh, as, uh, approach so that the difference facing the the altar and facing the people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much for this uh, contribution and also the question you asked. As I said in between my talk, my presentation, actually when you, some of the sources I consulted, you are clear that each of them, they have their own arguments. But why the change of recent results of the Oscar uh, uh, was what wrong to bring this Communal aspect. Imagine somebody coming to you 
and it looks as if the person is back in you. Naturally, I don't know from traditional point of view where I come from, it will be a kind of uh, uh, insult. But if someone is facing you and is talking to you, then it brings out this element. Hence, even for the paper, I was able to, those who have the paper, you see where I clearly stated out the arguments for facing the people. I said there, the argument for facing the people is to allow the communal people centered worship mm -hmm. aspect of celebration. Here, Mass is seen as the last supper where all the people to get gather together for Thanksgiving meal and looking forward for the heavenly banquet. Remember the scenario we see in the last supper where they gather as a community. <coughs> Christ is not back there. <coughs> so there is not a part of that the main point there, that is to break out this element that we are together. The other one aspect of the other one actually is that the, the priest is leading the prayer, I mean, back in the people. But the Scrum Mass Camp Council or the Cochlear uh, Mass is trying to bring this element of community. And that perhaps also even inform what Scrum Mass Camp Council we're talking about, even the church also today. We encourage even the church to be like a, a community gathered for worship. No longer this uh, trunk side church where the church is so long, like it has like a cross, but a kind of small uh, uh, building that we have this community like in a semi secular form. At worship. So what I'm, the point I'm making out there is that it is to encourage the communal aspect where you find the people along instead of backing them, which is some tradition can be kind of demeaning or degrading that you are talking to, you are, you are doing something for someone and you are backing the person. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.